Hello guys, we are back in the UK in search of masters and PhD opportunities and if possible fully funded where your tuition and your living stipend will be covered. So the first scholarship we're looking at today is at the University of East Anglia. In fact all the opportunities we'll be looking at today are at this university and the first one is the Allen and Nestor Ferguson Scholarship. In fact three people from this YouTube channel got the scholarship last year and it covers everything from tuition costs to your living allowance. But apart from Alan Nesta, we'll be looking at other funding opportunities at um, the University of East Anglia. So for the Alan Nesta, you also have to fill a form. There is an application form you have to fill apart from applying for one of the courses eligible for the scholarship. There's an application form and a special essay. And I've written tips here already on how to answer the essay questions. So we'll be coming to this. There's also a database of different assorted scholarships you might be interested in. Some of them are fully funded, some of them are partially funded. We'd also be looking at research studentships, that's a PhD, usually PhD or master's by research scholarships. Most of them are also fully funded for both home students and international students. There are varieties of scholarships also, both at the International Development Department and other departments at this university. As I said, some of them are fully funded, some of them are partially funded. And of course, there are some familiar names as well, like the Commonwealth Scholarship. So if you're like a, an old viewer, you probably know the name already. On my channel, I've talked in details about the Commonwealth already. So the Commonwealth is also available at this university, University of East Anglia, and the deadline is in December, I believe. And the deadline is also at December 13th. So in case you're interested in this scholarship as well, there are sufficient guidelines on this channel on how to go about it. So let's begin without any further delay. Let's take it step by step. So we'll begin with the Allen, Nesta and Ferguson scholarship. As I said, three people got it from this channel last year. I think we claimed all the opportunities actually at this university. And so let's do it again. Why not? Why not? So let's begin. How do you apply for this? So this scholarship is present at the International Development Department. So if you intend to, to apply for this scholarship, you need to choose one of the courses. There are different, several courses under the International Development Department. We'll be looking at the, the, the different courses shortly. So then you have to apply for one of the courses and then return here to apply for the scholarship. So these are the countries eligible for this particular one. It's a very long list here usually developing countries. And if your country is not here, do not worry. You can always check the database and search for your own country. One of these scholarships might just catch your interest and you might just be eligible for them. So do not worry if your country is not on this list. Well, fortunately, my country is here. I can see Nigeria here already. There is Ghana here. And there are several other countries, Papua New Guinea, Pakistan. Myanmar, Mozambique, Mauritania, Syria. I think there's Afghanistan there up there. So Cambodia as well. So lots of countries. Hopefully yours is among the listed ones. So how do you apply for this? Well, first of all, let's talk about the money. For the money, it's a fully funded scholarship. So it covers tuition for international students. So tuition is covered. And then a maintenance grant of 12000 and from this maintenance grant, you can take from it to cover your living cost and other things you might need in the UK when you begin your studies. So you wouldn't need to move a financial muscle when you get the scholarship. So it's confirmed here, tuition fees maintenance cost. You can see here the value, close to £30,000. That's a lot of money and that's a lot of investment in you. So if you want to win this, you have to bring in your A game because nobody will just throw... Thirty thousand pounds, thousand pounds at you just like that. You have to merit it. You have to fight for it. And these are the application criteria as well. You can see them here. So to apply, as I said, you have to apply for one of the eligible courses at the International Development Department, and then come to this form. Click on Apply here. So this is the deadline to submit the form, not the deadline to apply for admission for the course. There are two different things. So you have the course application and then the scholarship application. So this is where you apply for the scholarship. And if you click on this button, it takes you to this form. 
So what of the course? To apply for the course, simply go to look for the course page. Let's go to the, let's open a new window. And let's look for international development. Yeah, let's go to courses and courses under international development. And let's see, let's put MSc, let's MSc courses and let's see what comes out. Then remember it's for next year and postgraduate and it's full time. So these are the courses under international development or school of international development. You can see here impact evaluation for global development. There's health economics, there's um, global development management. There's education, leadership and management, development economics, climate change, global development, media and development, development business, sustainable development. So you can see them lots of courses to choose from. You can see um, social development. This one begins in February, so you have to be careful. I think the Alenesta is for, I believe, for September intake. I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But you can always inquire if that one for February is also part of it, what I think is for se September intake. And by the way, the deadline for the scholarship is in June, so the February intake might not be eligible for um, the Alan Nesta um, scholarship. So you can see a number of courses here and check. One of them might just catch your interest. You can see gender here as well. There are probably more courses in the International Development Department, Environment, Education, Agriculture. You can see, so you just go to International Development and see the courses that align with your interest, if that makes sense. And of course, check the applications requirements, check. You can see International Development School. You can check the entry requirements two, one usually, and also check the language requirement and see if you can get an exemption. If you've already studied in the English language, you might not need to submit um, an English language test, but verify from them. So dig up this on your own and check whether you need to submit an English language test or not. And also engage with the department if you're not certain. You can always send them an email and they'll be glad to um, clarify your doubts. In fact, there's often someone there paid to actually listen to your inquiries and answer them. So please give that person a little bit of work, you know, and send them emails to clarify these things. So let's go back to the Allen and Nesta Ferguson. As I said, when you apply for one of these courses, we've seen the list of different courses here. You can see development and gender and health, agriculture, climate change. So while you apply for this one, you also want to maybe come back you don't need to do them simultaneously, but it depends on your schedule because there's enough time. But by June 3rd, you must have submitted this form. And this is the form that we can reference to. This is the form. And at the beginning of the form, you just have to submit your um, application ID. So you must have started an application for one of those courses. And then submit your application ID and other simple data like your name, email, and things like that. These are easy things that you can't you can can't easily miss and of course international development school of international development here but then let's go straight to the essays because this is often the make or break a number of people might get admitted but not everyone will get the scholarship right so this essay might just be the deal maker or the deal breaker so i think we should spend a little bit of time on it so we got in last year as i told you three people let's do it again this year so look at this question Please outline your financial need. Um, this scholarship will be awarded on the basis of financial need. Please use this section to tell us anything that we should take into account about your financial circumstances. 500 words. So if I were to approach this essay, for instance, I would begin with them. Um, how I'm a very passionate um, young professional a young student in need of financial aid for further studies in ABC, that's in maybe development and gender studies or development and agriculture, de development and rural studies, which aligns with my future goal and my aspirations, aligns with my background and work experience as well. So you may declare you're passionate, you want to study this to further your interest in this particular field. Then I want to talk about how you sponsored your undergraduate studies. So a number of people probably got assistance from relatives or had to do petty jobs 
or have to take loans that are yet to even pay back. You know, show like a difficulty that has never been so easy for you that you actually struggled to make ends meet as an undergraduate student. Probably you had to do part-time jobs or collect loans or your parents had to like assist you from their meager resources and things like that. And like from a house of many other children to cater for, you know, to just show a little bit of difficulty in your previous academic journey. Then you might want to talk about your current financial status. Probably you're working or unemployed, but show how what you're earning cannot fund your master's um, studies. You might say, oh yes, I'm earning salary already, but with the weight of inflation in the country, can hardly save any money. Or because you have lots of dependents, probably you're married and you have um, children already, or you're taking care of your younger siblings, or you have old parents you're taking care of. So things like that might, might um, eat into your income and prevent you from saving or for investing in your education. It is also important to give an estimate of your income in British pounds. Yeah, so whatever you're earning, whether you're earning in Naira, pesos, CDs, you know, ran, try as much as possible to give the estimate in um, British pounds. That's the annual, your annual income. Give the estimate and show how it is a far cry from the fees you expected to pay and the living costs in the UK. So then um, you could end, you know, it's just 500 words, but you could end with the with a flourish and strong. Show them how this financial aid would change your life and ch change the life of your community. You know, you can remind them that education is a tool for social mobility. That you believe if you're equipped with this financial aid, you study this course, it increases your prospect of getting a very good job. It also increases your prospect of contributing more to the society and pulling more people out of poverty, helping not just your family members, but also the community and country at large where you're coming from. So that is it for this first essay. You can see the outline here. Passionate professional in need of financial aid for further studies, the struggles you encountered in your undergrad, your current employment status and income status, the estimate of your annual income in pounds, and briefly states how life changing this opportunity will be for you. Then there's a second question, also 500 words. I explain in no more than 500 words why you should be awarded the scholarship. You should refer to your academic history, your course ambitions, um, career goals, and how the, the scholarship will help. Good. So why should you be selected? Show them that you're an excellent student. Show them your grades. What did you graduate with? What course did you study? What university did you study? Um, show them you're open to learning. You know, like what modules did you study? What extracurricular activities? I think you should put that there as well extracurricular Extra curricular activities did you undertake like your language skills and and things like that so excellent student with good grades then open to learning look at the courses you've done probably you've even done some online courses probably you have some extra language skills some extracurricular you're also engaging so you're a rounded student so problem solver so there's an issue you want to contribute to in your field of study. So you have to mention what that issue is and why is it urgent? Why do we need to take care of this issue? Yours might be about gender equality. That in your society, there's a large gender gap between men and women, a large income gender gap as well. And it has led to a lot of marginalization of certain people of certain gender. And you probably show statistics or show, um, back up your whatever problem you're trying to highlight with kind of um, evidence to show this is urgent and is worth taken care of. So show the urgency of the issue in your field that you intend to address. So this is important. Make it clear. This is the issue I'm interested in. So how would the course you, in, you, you intend to apply for, how would it help you solve this problem? You can list the skills that you intend to learn from the course. You get all these things on the course page. So you visit the course page, see what the course is all about, read what the module, read what the modules is, um, are all about and see the particular skills, the objective of the course. You can always um, lift it and put here, but in your own words, of course, you don't just copy and paste to avoid plagiarism. But you can just check the course page, see the things you'll be studying, then summarize them and put them here and connect them, of course, to the problem you raised earlier. So skills you will learn, 
cost modules, cooperation with international faculty and student body. This is also very important. So this is an international university with a very diverse community of students and um, faculty. So tell them as well that you would like to interact with people from other countries, both students and faculty. And this global learning, um, what do they call it? Exchange of knowledge and lesson drawing. It's quite important in this dynamic international community. Of course, you can also tell them what you're doing already, like your work experience in that field you mentioned, in that problem you mentioned. So what are you doing already in your own little corner? And um, things like volunteer experience, outreach, it's also good to also beef you up as a good student and also a good professional. They're already doing something, not just waiting for a master's before you start working. But even with your um, bachelor's degree, you're already on the field working. So your master's will only help you to am amplify what you're already doing on the field. So work experience, volunteer experience, outreach, very important. Give concrete examples of how you're doing this. Finally, your aspirations. What are your short-term goals, medium-term goals, long-term goals? I remember these goals shouldn't just be about you, but they should be community-oriented. So short-term goals, what will you do like a year after you graduate? Uh, medium-term goals, let's say three, four, five years. And the long-term goal is like the lofty, very big plan, like where I want to become the head of, let's say, the UN or the president of this country, or the minister of education, or the minister of agriculture, minister of sports or environment, or things like that, and show how this course would plunge you into these lofty, ambitious goals by giving you the grounding, you know, the theory, the practice, the skills, the international exposure, the lesson drawing, the global best practices, and things like that. So there you go. I hope this was useful for the essays. I hope you use them to your advantage as well. And of course, you click on yes, that you've read the consent and, and um, information privacy and data privacy stuff. And then submit your essay. And voila, by this time next year, I hope we'll be celebrating you as well when you're already at Inst Anglia studying your desired course. And of course, I said there are other scholarships here. This scholarship, for instance, apart from the Allen Nest that I just looked at now, this one is also at the Department of International Development. But this covers only full tuition, which is a lot of money already, 19800 Then if you get this one, you have to provide your own um, living allowance. But this is already very, very generous. And it's to be awarded to five people. And then um, usually five international students, either international or the EU, and there's a small essay here on um, how to apply for this one as well. For this one, you also need to apply for one of those courses and then return here for um, this application portal for the scholarship. So you can always draw lessons from what I just said in the Alan Nesta scholarship for this one. So I do not need to repeat, like go to the form and repeat how to write the essay and also be aware of the deadline, of course. Then we talked about Commonwealth Scholarship. It's just, just check my channel. My channel is known as the Commonwealth Channel because we account for 40% of the entire intake of the Commonwealth Scholarship. For the past two years now, we get, we just roll out the numbers every year. So just check the videos on my channel and we got you through and through for the Commonwealth Scholarship. So then let's look for the other database. I told you about a database with all that kinds of scholarship. And one caught my eyes already David Sensbury Scholarship. There's actually a video on this channel on how to apply for the scholarship. And it's also for international students. It's fully funded, covers maintenance and travel cost. And this is the deadline. I actually met two people, actually stumbled on two people in London who um, got the scholarship. And beware, there are two kinds. There are some for, that is just 10%. And there's another one that is fully funded. So the people I met actually got the fully funded one. You can always check here and get full clarification. But the David Sensbury Scholarship is for those interested in plant health, global plant science, and things like that. So as I told you, it's two bits. You can see this one, full tuition of 31,000, then a living stipend of seven, over 17,000. So there's also one for... 10%, but I think most of you will be looking at this one, actually. So there's a video already on this channel on how to apply for this one, so you can always consult.
that video. Lastly, I think we should also look at um, other funding opportunities. Very soon, we're looking at the PhDs as well. So there's a, there's a long list here. There's actually one scholarship here as well for those in the performance arts, literature, and things like that. Let's check quickly. So this is the Alan Nesta, by the way, the one we just looked at now. So let's look at the Global Voices. Global Voices Scholarship, you can see here, covers full tuition fees for international students and the living grant. And this is for those from the African continent. And um, let's go back there. For those studying prose friction, fiction, poetry, script writing, and biography and creative non-biography. So if this catches your interest, please go for it. There are also a number of other writing fellowships here as well, creative writing. So please take advantage, lots of freebies, scholarships for you to grab. So let's go to the PhD. You can always click on here for the postgraduate research fellowships. So click on this, it takes you to the different PhD research fellowships. So just click on all, all opportunities there. You can also use the filter function, 2023-2024. Then choose that you're an international student. Choose you're looking for a funded opportunity, probably a studentship as well. I hardly know the difference here, but you get the point. So here you can check for the different opportunities open for international students. For different faculties as well, you can see law here already. There's one in education. You can see agriculture. I think this is like zoology or zooplankton migration. Okay. So different courses, you can see the long list here and it's up to lots of varieties here. So you can click on one and see the applications requirements. So this one is in law. Click on the applications requirements, see what they require and also check for the funding. How much are they giving? You can see cover fees for both home and international students. And then you have a stipend of over 17,000 pounds and also a research grant of 750 pounds every year. So this is beautiful. Check for your own course. It's a very long list of funded projects and funded um, courses here for, what I put it, for um, PhDs. So let's go back there. Yes, this is it. Let's go back there. So check for other opportunities as well for your own departments. So whether you're from politics, from physics, chemistry, law, fine arts, engineering. So you can always check for what is available for you. And that's it, guys. It's a very loaded package today at the University of East Anglia. We started from the Allen Nestor Ferguson Scholarship and we looked at how to fill the form. And then we consider the database as well. Then things like Chelvin, we mentioned that already. Um, David Sainsbury's, we mentioned that already. And the partial one at um, still International Development that covers all the fees. And you just have to provide your own um, living stipend. And that's it, guys. I hope this was useful. We cannot wait to celebrate you. So start working on your application. Start putting your documents together. Read through the website. Ask questions. Send them emails. They're always there, happy to respond to you. And of course, there are several other opportunities flying about. So make sure you watch these videos, binge watch my channel <laughs> and get at least one of these opportunities. And by this time next year, I'll be shouting your name as well. So that's it for today. I hope this was useful and bye-bye for now. But I'll see you at the top sooner than later. Take care.